So I thought it'd be kind of fun to try out a new IDE. This is like a next generation code editor um, called Cursor and it's powered by GPT-4 and GPT-3.5. Um, this is a fork of VS Code that's been modified to implement AI into everything you do. I've just installed it. This is the first screen. Let's go. And so if you'd like, you can launch Cursor from the command line using Code or Cursor. I think I would like to use Cursor because I am still attached to VS Code. I'm sure that's not what the guys over at Cursor want me to do. I'm going to just bring my extensions in straight away. Ooh, it synchronized my theme straight up. It's got Git Lens. It's opening Spotify. Now I just need to set up Copilot, I believe. And then code base understanding. So we use OpenAI embeddings to help cursor answer questions about your entire repo. Okay, so what they're basically gonna do is they're gonna take the entire repo that you're working on, they're gonna turn it into chunk, then they're gonna embed it. Embedding all of the code means that they have to process the entire code base, which some people might not be happy with. Um, and then they turn them into essentially just lists of numbers. They're essentially just numerical representations of the tokens within the code. And then they can use that to like better understand what the code is, how it relates to uh, what the LLM knows, but also how different chunks of the code relate to one another. And maybe you want to say, show me all the functions that do x or show me all of the variables that are similar to y and if you do that and you embed the whole code base then you can actually uh, truly understand the code you're working on it to avoid abuse on our back end we ask that you log in to use the ai features oh i have my own open ai key okay that's set up I am now in Cursor. I need to still sign in to GitHub Copilot. I love that Copilot comes as well into the editor with me. Welcome to Cursor. Okay, so I can import my settings from VS Code. I think that's already happened because I already have my theme. So I can Command L and that will open the chat panel. When you want the AI to change some code for you, use your mouse to select the code, then hit Command K Ooh, very nice. So this is how I can like prompt GPT-4, I'm presuming, to make a change to my code within the editor. Very, very nice. Nice. I love that there are hotkeys for chat and also to do something on the code. This is lovely. I can do command K and then I can um, just ask it to do something. So I can be like, write a sentence that <laughs> right, this is not a coding challenge. Oh, we can select the model that we want to use. That's very interesting. I tend to find that GPT-4 is much, much, much better at programming. Cool, so it generated a little comment here. So command K is what we do. Basically, command K is like our prompt for the code. I can select a model I want. We already discovered that by accident, but that's very nice. This does feel very familiar. That's what I love the most about Cursor so far is that it feels like I'm using VS Code. It doesn't feel alien, um, in fact, the only thing that I'm missing is the sidebar, but I can see what they've done is they've just added the sidebar kind of at the top, which is really nice. Can I attach? Oh, yeah, I can. Nice. So I can attach things here. So if I go to, okay, so let's try and open a repo. This is the old Carter website. This is totally fine because this was public. Um, I can give, oh, it needs to be re-authenticated with GitHub Copilot, that's interesting. I'm in, so let's try and, do I have my terminal? Yeah, nice, so I already have my terminal. This is exactly the same as VS Code. This is really nice. Cursor, you've done a great job. So I can have all of my commands in here. I can just boot up the website. This is really nice. This just looks exactly the same. Okay, so let's take this button and I can just say um, clean up this code, hit submit and GPT-4 will rewrite this code. Okay, so what it's done is it's decided that I should move this function into its own function. The problem is it hasn't actually written the function anywhere. So if I do that, it's just gonna immediately break it. So I'm gonna actually reject this. Let's try something else. So if I select the whole file and then I do the prompt and I just say clean, clean up this file. It's going through and it's completely rewriting the code base in front of me. So I'm not touching anything and I'm scrolling, but the AI is just reading the code and rewriting the code. And once it's done, I'm guessing it's going to give me the option to accept or reject the change. I think it's done. No, it's still going. 
So still going, let's have a look. So what's it done? So the red is things it's getting rid of, green is things it's adding, this is really interesting, and then blank is like stuff it's keeping the same. So this is really cool. It's got rid of some imports, it's rejumbled some stuff around, kept the uh, Google, Google Analytics stuff, um, and it's got rid of the whole chunk of code, including the function GPT-4 was trying to get rid of earlier, which is here. I'm guessing it's made its own handler. Has it? Yes. Handle click. And if we go up here, there we go. It's moved everything into a nice function. So if I accept this change and I just have to hit control enter. Yeah. So it's refactored this whole file for me. Um, so that's the first thing. So I have refactored a file by just simply doing command K and asking it to refactor the file. I can ask the AI anything I want about this code. And I think I can do it by just asking. So if I just do, um, where can I find my Google Analytics ID in this app? And hopefully, very, very nice. So the Google Analytics ID, wow, it even gives me inline code snippets. Very, very lovely. Uh, this is really amazing. And this is just GPT-4, of course. I'm not sure whether the cursor are actually doing anything with GPT-4 to get this kind of performance out of it. I'm guessing they are. I'm guessing there's a lot of prompting and, and things in between to basically turn GPT-4's inputs and outputs into usable content um, for this amazing IDE. Now, this is obviously like a first reaction video to this IDE, to this text editor. It is late here. I'm going to play with this some more and I might do another video in a couple of days time. Uh, just diving into what my thoughts are. But right now, my thoughts are this is excellent. This is really exciting to see this. And I can't wait to see what other tricks Cursor has tucked away. I also can't help but think that developers' days of writing code are coming to a close for the majority of stuff. And I think that we're probably going to end up becoming sort of more like product managers at some point. But time will tell. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this, hit the subscribe button. See you later.